Hi, and welcome to the Dietless 79 Coffee Talk. I am your host, Sean, aka Dietless 79, and I thought I would start off by giving you all the rundown of what this coffee talk exactly is. On a suggestion from Warren, I thought I would do something that was a little more general audience, more so towards things in the news and media in general, outside of tech, gaming, and geek. As well, I want to script these a little bit better so I can avoid both dead air and my annoying habit of segueing with the words mmm and ah. I want to do these on par with the unrants, which will be about two to three times a week with them opposite to these. And it gives me a chance to stretch out in a more general realm and maybe get to reach a larger audience. And so with that, let's start. First, I want to get to the news for both my part of the world and abroad. Here in Canada, it was learned that the Canada Revenue Agency, which is the equivalent to the Internal Revenue Service of the United States, has revealed that they had about 900 social insurance numbers stolen from them due to the rampant heartbleed bug. The bug, which is an exploit of OpenSSL, allows the bug to garner information from any site or service implementing the SSL and TLS protocols. Quote, based on an analysis to date, social insurance numbers of approximately 900 taxpayers were removed from CRA systems, stated Andrew Truch, CRA commissioner, in an official statement. Truch states that the CRA will not be contacting affected taxpayers by email or phone. Quote, we want to ensure that our communications are secure and cannot be exploited by fraudsters through phishing schemes. Unquote. Credit protection services will be offered at no additional fee to those who are affected, as well as Additional protections will be put in place to monitor the breached social insurance numbers to ensure that there is no unauthorized activity utilizing the stolen information. Quote, as the commissioner of the CRA, I want to express regret to Canadians for this service interruption, Truce states. In particular, I share the concern and dismay of those individuals whose privacy had been impacted by this malicious act. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police are investigating the breach. And if you think your site that you frequent could be at risk, check it using www.lastpass.org. In other news, in a new study from Simon Fraser University, Over the Hill apparently hits a person like a brick wall at 24. Psych doctoral student Joe Thompson, Professor Mark Blair, and staff doctoral student Andrew Henry uses records of over 3,000 StarCraft II players to reach this epiphany. For the uninformed, StarCraft 2 is a real-time strategy game where the game player is required to strategize, make quick threat analysis, and then react accordingly in a speedy manner. The game allowed them to measure this in a controlled environment instead of the real-world measurements, which is much harder to do. At least in the motor and cognitive performance realm, it appears 24 is when the slide hits. They found older players compensate for this decline by utilizing more simple strategies and keyboard interface shortcuts. Older players, they found, had a difference of 150 milliseconds in reaction time based on a scale between 24 and 39 years of age. Younger players apparently use more complex strategies as an exploit of speed advantage. The online scientific journal PLOS1 published these findings last week. Dmitry Rogozin, the Russian deputy prime minister, has stated that Russia plans on setting up a permanent moon base. In an article in the Russian government daily, Roskaya Gazeta Rogozin states that Moscow plans to establish a permanent base on the moon, which would mean that due to the inhabitation, the Russians would be in control of the moon, somewhat akin to squatters' rights. He rationalizes that it would apparently be more cost-effective to stage things like trips to Mars or asteroids from the moon instead of having to go all the way back to Earth. In a 2012 interview, Rogozin stated that Russia wanted to make big scientific leaps, and the moon base was only one of them. And finally, an Arizona coroner announced Tuesday that the ultimate warrior, formerly known as James Helwig, had died of natural causes attributed to heart disease. The specific cause of death was determined to be arteriosclerotic, arteriosclerotic cardiovascular disease, according to the Marcopo County Office of the Medical Examiner. What this is, in layman's term, is when the blood vessels that carry oxygen and nutrients from the heart to the body become blocked or hardened, restricting the blood flow. Helwig, who stood 6 feet 2 inches, weighed 280 pounds, and was known for his commanding presence in the ring, neon attire, face paint, long blonde hair, and chiseled physique, was 54. He had collapsed outside of a hotel in Scottsdale, Arizona, just a day after being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Well, that's what I thought of news this week, and I thought I would share. Tune in again to this channel three times a week, and on rants as well. Catch you later.